silly of me. On the CR500 for the first time in a while. Which probably explains why it started right up this morning with no drama. That or it just likes the cold. Anywho, yeah, as I... You may have noticed in one of my other videos, I mentioned that I had banged my uh, foot up a bit. So it's been no CR500 for a while. Like a month and change, which sucks. But it's more or less better, I think. At least it's complaining less regularly, so I'm inclined to say, fuck it, it's fine, let's go ride. And as long as this thing doesn't pull one of its, you know what, I don't really feel like starting for half an hour things, we should be more or less okay. You know, wrap around in the uh, leaves a little bit. Enjoy what's left to fall. And uh, find something to talk about. A lot of fallen trees all of a sudden around here. So what are we gonna talk about? Uh, I think what I wanna talk about is the Grand Tour. It's a new show on Amazon. I'm sure a bunch of you guys are uh, Top Gear fans, so you probably know all about it. If not, uh, The Grand Tour is a show that Jeremy Clarkson, uh, Richard Hammond, and James May started up after Top Gear and the BBC made it go away thanks to, you know, god damn, there's a lot of fucking fallen trees around here all of a sudden. And I haven't ridden this course in such a long time, I'm starting to forget where the fuck it goes. Anywho, uh, BBC pulled the plug on Top Gear uh, because Clarkson went and duped some guy. Uh, which is kind of a dick move, but whatever, they overreacted. Because offending anyone in Europe is, you know, cause for, I don't know, public flogging probably at some, some stage. Anyway, Top Gear went away and, uh, Amazon said, hey, we'll give you guys a bunch of money if you want to come make a show for us. So, unsurprisingly, that's what they did. And last night was the first episode of the Grand Tour. And I thought I would share some of my thoughts on it. First thought, it's awesome. I like it very much. It's uh, kind of the show you can tell they kind of wanted to be making for the last five years or so. And they were just kind of stuck with a, a kind of a small budget compared to what they have now anyways. Shit. And also just the, the constant muling of the BBC bureaucrats. So now they have none of that to deal with. They can pretty much do whatever the fuck they want with a largely unlimited budget. And uh, I really liked it. I thought they were, you know, one of the best things about those kind of buddy shows is uh, it's really obvious if they're kind of phoning it in or if they're really genuinely having a good time. And it really looks like they are genuinely having a good time, which uh, is good. It makes fuck. I keep forget missing that now that tree is fucking me up. <laughs> so I think they're having a lot of fun with it. It's certainly, granted it's only the first episode, but there was a few awkward moments where they're kind of Okay, what do we actually do now? Like the whole killing the, uh, killing the star in a reasonable place car, which I actually agree with. I thought the celebrity uh, interviews were one of the most boring, stupid segments of Top Gear. So, I don't know if they're actually gonna do anything with it or if that was just their kind of ritualistic way of saying, all right, no more of this shit. But either way, it was a lot of fun to watch. And uh, 
I really like that it's on demand, so I can watch it whenever. I really like that I don't have to download fucking torrents of it now to watch the show. I can just watch it on Amazon. And, uh, that's cool, you know, and also, they have the budget now where they can do the, uh, one, one cut of music for the whole show. It's not like before they had, like, the UK version, which actually had good music and stuff in it. In many cases, that was, like, a big part of the gag. And they had to edit all that crap out for the BBC America version. And that, you know, kind of give it kind of a meh feel. Plus, I didn't like waiting for it. I mean, initially, you had to wait, like, a year. And they got it down to, like, a week or two towards the end. Towards the end. But I still had to wait for it, and I don't like that shit. I like now, I mean, if it's something I really am enthused about, it's like even YouTube videos, as soon as it's out, I just want to watch it, you know? So I'm glad they did that with it. Damn those leaves. And the trees. Oh god, this thing's fast. <laughs> you don't ride it for a while. And you forget how silly it is. Whew. It's kinda like Top Gear. You know? It's been gone. It's well, I mean the new version with it's not even worth remarking on, it's so terrible. But it's been, you know, they haven't been doing a show for so long, you kind of forget how much you appreciated, you know, their shtick and their comedy. And all the silly crap they do, really. I'm gonna get rid of this tree, it's pissing me off. Which means I need a place to park this damn thing. Here's a place. If I'm lucky, that'll start right back up once I move this fucking tree. If I'm lucky. Ugh. Too many blotty trees. Blotty, blotty. So yeah, I, all in all, I thought it was a great show. Lots of fun. A lot of the uh, the, the latter years of Top Gear had been kind of, you know, kind of kind of felt like they weren't having a whole lot of fun with it anymore. And uh, that seems to have been addressed. Normal service has been resumed, as they say. And I like it, you know, it's one of the very few things on, well, I guess it's not on television anymore, but one of the few things that's kind of mainstream produced that I enjoy watching anymore, just because uh, it's fun, you know, it's, it's interesting, it's fun to see cars get beat the shit out of, it's fun to kind of watch these guys who you've, uh, you know, watched and enjoyed for like 10 years do their thing. Actually, more than 10 years, like 14 years. And uh, the biggest thing was always, I mean, I think peak Top Gear was always right around, you know, that's still a year, was right around like season 10 through 14. It's when they had the most fun, I think. And after that, it just got kind of, all right, I, I've seen this before. I don't need to necessarily see it again. So, a, as I think Clarkson said, it kind of needed to happen sooner or later. Okay. CR500 likes the cold weather.
fair enough. Get rid of this one too, because I don't like it. If anyone's wondering why I rev it like that before I shut it off, it's been my experience that is a surefire method of making a CR500 start back up again while it's hot, like first kick almost every time. Just preloads the cylinder with some go-go gas, go-go juice, whatever the hell you want to call it. <sighs> Of course, now it won't start at all. Oh, shit. Trying out some new camera mounts, and evidently that one needs a bit more work. Yep. Yeah, the ground's still a bit wet. Had some pretty serious rain come through, and the uh, leaves are not letting it dry out very well. So I gotta kind of watch myself here a little bit. Yep, yeah, that's better. Ooh, aside from that. Oh, it's nice to be back in the 500. Just goes to show you that even though I just bought some new bikes that were really not fucking cheap, you don't need to spend a lot of money to have a lot of fun on a dirt bike or on, on a motorcycle. Something like this will do pretty much everything you might want it to do for most people. Hell, most people are gonna be fucking terrified of this thing. And as well they should be. But, as I say in quite a number of my CR500 videos, if you like dirt bikes and you're a little bit experienced, God, you owe it to yourself to get one. Or uh, it's worth mentioning, if you can't find a nice CR500, the uh, Kawasaki KX500 is also a very nice alternative. I just had a chance to ride one the other day, a buddy of mine's got one, and uh, I liked it quite a lot. Unfortunately, I didn't get a video of that, because I was over just fucking around on his property, and he's like, hey, look what I bought. I'm like, oh, you dick. <laughs> but it's uh, quite a lot of fun. I like the KX500 as well. So I'll try at some point to get a video of both of them together for you guys. Jesus fast. <laughs> oh, fast in all the right ways. So yeah, Grand Tour. Leon Loco endorsed, I really enjoyed it. I look forward to uh, the next three years of those idiots <laughs> falling over and bursting into flames. <laughs> Shit, I really should have been off the fucking seat for that. <laughs> so the bike jumped and uh, I wasn't really part of the equation for a few seconds there. Whew. So yeah, Grand Tour, awesome show. And hopefully, you think mine is too. Which is why, if you haven't subscribed, now would be a dandy time to click that little button. That way you won't miss any videos, and I'll say, hey, you know what? 
people like my shit, so I'll keep doing it. Also, if you want to leave me a comment, go right ahead and do it. And uh, feel free to uh, share this video as well if you like on uh, Facebook or uh, Instagram or well, fucking Instagram, uh, Twitter. Whatever that one that's going out of business is. <laughs> Until next time, keep the shiny side up.